Let's talk about diabetic symmetric polyneuropathy. So diabetes affects the peripheral and central nervous system, and it's the most common cause of polyneuropathy in developed countries. It's estimated that about 50% of diabetics will develop polyneuropathy, and it's characterized by the loss of large myelinated and small myelinated and unmyelinated nerve fibers. It affects the axons, and especially the longest axons are affected first. So um, it is distal and it's symmetric. It starts at the feet and the large nerve fiber loss impairs proprioception and vibration sensation and causes reduced ankle reflexes. The small nerve fibers, uh, when they're lost, it impairs pain, light touch, and temperature sensation. What causes the pain? It's caused by abnormal function of the surviving nerve fibers and this pain is characteristically worse at rest. The symptoms start in the toes and then travel upwards. It will travel in a glo glove and stocking distribution and characteristically once it reaches about mid-calf then you'll start having the fingers become affected as well. So complications can include diabetic foot ulcers, as well as atrophy in the intrinsic foot muscles, and this is called clotto, shown here. So who should be screened? Pre-diabetics with symptoms of polyneuropathy, as well as type 1 diabetics five years after diagnosis, then annually, as well as type 2 diabetics at diagnosis, then annually. You should test for vibration, proprioception, pinprick, temperature, light touch with the 10 gram monofilament, and ankle reflexes. So in terms of diagnostic testing, no further testing needs to be done in a diabetic that has a typical case of the disease. But if further testing is done, the EMG and nerve conduction studies will show axonal polyneuropathy. Vitamin B12 can be a helpful lab test especially in a diabetic with worsening symptoms because metformin specifically blocks the intestinal absorption of vitamin B12. In terms of treatment, the mainstay is weight loss and exercise. Uh, you can also focus on optimizing glycemic control, blood pressure, and hyperlipidemia. Avoidance of cigarette use and alcohol use is important, specifically alcohol use Chronic alcohol use can also cause a uh, polyneuropathy. Daily self foot exams. Uh, the patient can examine his own feet on a daily basis for ulcers, and the feet should also be checked at clinic visits. And for the pain, topical capsaicin or lidocaine cream can be used if there's local pain. There's also medication treatments that are first line, including gabapentin and pregabalin. These can be helpful, and you can choose these if someone has restless leg syndrome. Uh, other first line agents include duloxetine, venlafaxine, and the tricyclics, such as amitriptyline. And these can be helpful if the patients have uh, co psychiatric comorbidities or migraines. And there have been small studies that have shown benefit from combination use as well, such as a uh, gabapentinoid and a antidepressant uh, in combination. Sometimes patients can also benefit from a TENS unit or from acupuncture.